Do you ever wish you could just take a break and find a quiet place to get away? I know I do. Hi, I'm Sue from Garden Moxie. Today I'm diving into the world of cloistered gardens from the Middle Ages, which is actually what inspired me to create a Mary Garden. I'm going to share the story of how I created my very own Mary Garden, which was inspired by these historical gems. I'm going to show you the actual steps I took to make my Mary Garden and some of the problems I faced along the way. I'll admit that a Mary Garden is kind of an unusual feature to find in a modern suburban landscape, and I think that's a shame. For me, the garden is the perfect place to reflect on the beauty of God's creation. But even if you don't consider yourself a religious person, I think a garden provides refuge that our modern sensibilities need. I think everybody can benefit from spending time in a quiet place where we aren't distracted by our phones or the busyness of the day. In order to get started with this story, let's first explore the idea of a cloistered garden. These secluded spaces, typically found within monasteries and convents, were places for meditation, reflection, and prayer. They symbolized a connection between the divine and the natural world. With their lush greenery and the serene atmosphere, they had carefully planned out layouts. These gardens were a testament to the devotion and artistry of the Middle Ages. And I've always been captivated with cloistered gardens. I love the idea of a courtyard garden secluded from the outside world. It's just so romantic. And these gardens typically include elements like fountains and statues, benches or shrines that help to contribute to the overall atmosphere of tranquility in the garden. And these gardens are made to create a sense of peace and serenity. And doesn't that sound like something that we can use in today's world? The idea for my Mary Garden started here, when I stumbled upon this marble statue at a local business. In order to get the statue home, my husband Tom and I rented a U-Haul along with a very heavy duty dolly and brought the statue home. That first season that we brought the statue home, all we really did was place it in the garden. At that point, I knew that I wanted to create a special little nook for the statue, but I didn't start the plans until the following season. I needed to redo the bed so that everything lined up with the statue. I love looking at these old photographs, and you can see here what we did was we lined up the statue to be centered with the arborvitae hedge that was already in place. There was an existing garden border that was surrounded by pavers. The first thing I did was remove the pavers around the existing border. I needed to widen the border to better line up with the Mary statue. I set up some string lines and got to work. The left-hand edge of the border was lined up with an existing white pine. That string line is also lined up with the edge of the boxwood border that's in the other part of the garden. So I started removing some of the turf so that I could widen each side of the borders. At that point, I knew I was going to keep the tree hydrangea and the arborvitae. I wanted to widen the border so that I could add some flowers. I also wanted to add some arborvitae at the top section of the border so that I could separate the Mary Garden from the rest of the garden as well. I needed to get a bunch of soil and a bunch of compost delivered so that I could mound up that section of the border. And we also lined it up with the end of the deck. I was really excited when those arborvitae were put in place because it started to look like a garden room. I think this photograph does a great job of showing how the Mary Garden lined up with the existing pine tree and the boxwood borders. I lined the border with bricks to match the other part of the garden. I still laugh when I look at these old photographs because once I had decided to add the curved section of arborvitae, I needed to go back in and reseed the turf that I had removed in order to get it to line up properly. This isn't the greatest quality photograph, but in this photo you can see how I added an Annabelle hydrangea at the end and I kept the tree hydrangea in place and the border was lined with bricks. 2018 was the biggest change when I had plans to add a hornbeam hedge. I found this great variety of hornbeam called Franz Fontaine at a local nursery center. The trees were too large for us to install ourselves. In order to save a little bit of money, we did end up digging the planting holes. I still remember how exciting it was to get those trees installed. And I'll tell you what, I was amazed that that truck actually fit into the backyard. We had to take the fence of, in the back section out in order to get the truck through the fence. The team that installed the trees was super professional and they did a fantastic job. And when they were done, we had an awesome hornbeam hedge. Once the trees were installed, I dropped a string line to make sure that everything was lined up with the existing boxwood borders. Those new hornbeam trees really created that special seclusion that the Mary Garden needed. 
This garden has definitely become my favorite place. The hornbeam trees have filled out so nicely and I'm at the point now where I need to decide if I'm going to allow them to become a complete wall or if I'm going to keep them in a column shape. I try to keep the color scheme in this garden really simple with white and green and chartreuse colors. Every once in a while there's a little pink flower on some of the lamian, but for the most part it's a very subdued color palette. We had an ice storm this season that damaged a lot of the surrounding pine tree branches. And because of this, I'm in a state right now where I'm moving plants around the Mary Garden because the garden is getting more sunlight than it used to get in the past. I'm also working to bring in plants from other parts of the garden so that I can continue to fill in some of the blank spaces. This garden used to have large sections of white Casablanca lilies. And I removed all those lilies because lily beetle moved into the garden and it was such a pest I couldn't keep up with it and really didn't want to use a bunch of pesticides. So this season I'm really focusing on trying to get low maintenance plants from other parts of the garden like this hosta and I'm just dividing them up moving them into the Mary garden and just filling in the empty spaces and the thing that I like about this is it is very cost effective so you can save a lot of money by just trying to use the other plants from the other sections of your border and so as I've been doing this little by little the Mary garden is filling up I did go to the garden center this season to purchase additional lamian because I do want to cover the soil in the Mary garden as if I can so here you can see I am just, I've I got a little flat of lamian and I'm just going to put it along the edges of the border and just continue to fill that out. My Mary garden is the favorite part in my garden. I love to just sit quietly and listen to the birds and watch the wind blowing through the plants. For me, this is the perfect spot for prayers and to just appreciate the beauty of God's creation. And even if you're not religious, a garden like this can serve as a refuge. There's no denying that spending time in nature is good for your mental health. Hey, hit me up in the comments below and let me know if you agree. Don't we need a place of refuge in this crazy world we live in? That's it for this video. Happy gardening, friends, and I'll see you in the next one. Anywhere feel like